I am at Sri Aurobindo Ashram in Raiwala. This place is beautiful. I wanted to show you this location and I'm gonna walk so you can see around. It's an ashram, it's called Auto Valley. It is different from Auroville. Auroville is a different ashram, but it's related to Shri Aurobindo and the mother which started this philosophy of spirituality in India many years ago. And this was founded based on that philosophy, this ashram. This is the guest hall where they have a lot of rooms. It's very beautiful, it's circular and it has two floors and the rooms are very clean that's my room 714 very peaceful Sri Aurobindo is a, is a very well-known um, philosopher, writer, uh, political activist and saint he's considered a saint in the last period of his life um, and he fought for Indians independence from the British uh, and he did it peacefully um, through words not through guns so in India ashrams are places of gathering for spiritual growth it's not just a hotel people can come and stay here for days at a time even months um, it's part of a pilgrimage, so to speak, where people are finding, trying to find that union with spirituality or whatever it is that they believe. This is an international ashram. People come from all over the world and you don't have to be from any particular religion. In the history of the earth, there are moments of transition when things that have existed for thousands of years must give way to those that are about to manifest. A special concentration of the world consciousness and an intensification of this effort occurs at such times. We are at precisely such a turning point in the world's history. Just as nature has already created upon earth a mental being a human being, so too there is now a concentrated activity from the universe to change human beings' mentality and bring forth a supramental consciousness. Sri Aurobindo incarnated the supramental consciousness in a human body to reveal to us the nature of this path and this transformation and his own life is an example of this personal realization. He has provided to us with the proof that the thing can be done and that the time has come to do it. Entering the Sabitri Library at the Auro Valley Ashram of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother Guys, this is truly an iconic place. I can't believe I'm here. This is where people gather to do collective readings, teachings of Sri Aurobindo and Satsang, spiritual gatherings. So special. It's like magical. Mm. You can really feel the peace and the, the specialness of this place. This is where Swami Bramdev sits. That's uh, the mother sculpture. And uh, 
philosophical topics and life and spirituality. Since I was very little, I constantly felt pulled to that, drawn to that environment. And now my goal is to read less books, to, to be less in my mind and less in, in my thoughts and more in just being, which is one of the practices for spiritual growth instead of being more on your thoughts or on your, in your mind all the time, trying to figure it out life or trying to plan, just trust, trust the cosmic intelligence, this, this, the universe, that it will guide you to wherever you need to go and offer your life, your work, everything you have for a divine purpose. This may be difficult to understand for the Western mind and is like an onion. You have to peel the layers little by little and trust the universe that intuition, which is developed um, in Sri Aurobindo's teachings, we call it the psychic. The psychic is the soul, the spiritual center, the soul, which can receive information from the universe and it is similar to what we will call the intuition that is not making decisions through the mind but feeling it in the center of your spirit some people call it in the center of your heart So every bookcase is embedded in the wall and it has all the teachings of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. They wrote extensively, they wrote a lot and all the collections are here in these bookshelves. You can read the story of the mother Mira Alfasa since she was little. Let me show you the pictures again. Uh, when she was very little, she was having psychic powers, uh, a lot of intuition, and she knew she had to come here to India. She's okay, friends. So that is all. And I will see you soon with more news about this. The desire to know more, to learn more about our true self, and how can we help the world, humanity. Uh, me being a psychologist, a counselor in the United States, I'm always interested in learning more about how to help people to overcome uh, difficulties, depression, anxiety, all of that. And in coming to a place like this, one realizes that it is really within our hands, it's in our hands to understand our true nature. Uh, there is a quote that is on the other side, let me see if I can walk over there, that says that it is the ego that gets depressed, not you. So just let it pass. Don't worry too much about being anxious or about being depressed. It is the ego 
that gets depressed and not your true self. And here's the quote that I was telling you. I'm gonna see if I can just turn these. So that one says right there. It says, it is the ego that gets depressed. Do not mind it. Go on quietly with your work and the depression will disappear. When in ignorance, one speaks ill of others, he debases his consciousness and degrades his soul. So not talking ill about others is a yoga principle. And it is very important to increase our consciousness and to live a peaceful and joyful life, quality of life for, for ourselves and for others. Do not judge, do not criticize, do not compare. The best way to help the world, it is to transform oneself by an integral and intensive yoga. In other words, there may be a lot of things we cannot do to help others or to change the world, but the only thing we can do for sure is to transform ourselves. It is always a mistake to complain about the circumstances of our life for they are the outward expression of what we are ourselves. Sri Aurobindo and the mother spoke and wrote extensively about the concept of the psychic being as the new phase of human evolution. The psychic being is moved by the truth. The truth is something eternally self-existent and dependent on nothing in time or space whereas the psychic being is a being that grows, takes form, progresses, and individualizes itself more and more. In this way, the psychic being becomes more capable of manifesting the truth, the eternal truth, also called higher knowledge or universal consciousness. This eternal truth is one and permanent. The psychic being is a progressive being, which means that the relation between the psychic being and the truth is a progressive one. It is not possible to become aware of one's psychic being without becoming aware at the same time of the inner truth. All those who have had this experience not a mental experience, but an integral experience of contact with the psychic being, all say the same thing. From the very minute this contact takes place, one is absolutely conscious of the eternal truth or universal knowledge within oneself, and one sees that it is the purpose of life and the guide of the world. Hello guys, so I wanted to send you this video of the ashram during night. Look how beautiful it is with the lights. This is the beautiful library. I'm walking for dinner to the kitchen.
This is where people clean the dishes, everybody who eats here. guys hello this is my second day at the ashram Sri Aurobindo ashram this morning I just went outside to walk in this beautiful place and we are getting ready to have breakfast at 8 a.m. we wake up at 6 a.m. and you can do yoga if you want to join a yoga class and then at 8 we join for breakfast and the mornings here are beautiful. They are misty during winter with a lot of mist in the morning and it dissipates throughout the day. And right there you can see how cloudy it still looks. It's 8 a.m. The Very wisdom beautiful. of the mother says that there is only one way for you. It is a total, complete and unconditional surrender the giving up not only of your actions, work, ambitions, but also of your feelings in the sense that all that you do, all that you are, is exclusively for the divine. So you feel above the surrounding human reactions, not only above them, but protected from them by the divine's grace. Once you have achieved these once you give up the attachment to all exterior beings and things, you at once feel in your heart this presence, this grace that is always with you. Here is a great place for thinking, for uh, meditating, and even for life transitions. You can come here for advice guidance from Swami, the, the Swami who runs this is Swami Bramdev. Also ashrams because they are uh, frequented by spiritual people and they are run by uh, Swami or Pravijikas and they are spiritually elevated, enlightened maybe. Um, these places are full of energy, of positive energy. Uh, they are charged with this spiritual energy that you can feel.